Well, welcome to Chasing Giants TV. We got another episode here, but this one's gonna be a bit different. This video is gonna stretch over a couple days because we're gonna finally get around to putting this 360 blind together. Now, I know what you're saying. It's awful close to hunting season to be worrying with this, and I get it. Uh, I've been trying to make time to do this project for at least three months and just have not gotten to it yet. But uh, we're gonna do it a little bit different than what a lot of people do. There's actually three ways that I know of that you can put a blind together with the factory supplied stand. You can take every pink, everything out to the field, put the stand together, the stand actually bolts to the floor, level it, build the blind above it. You can build the blind at your house, take the blind on a trailer to the farm or to the hunting location, lift it up with a skid loader or tractor that has forks, bolt the legs to it, have them dangle, and then gently set it down. I know that's how the guys at Team Radical do it. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the floor and assemble the stand here at the house without the ladder on it. And then we're gonna tip it into the back of my trailer, haul it to the farm, stand it up in the location, put the ladder on it, level it, anchor it down, and then build the blind. And the reason for that is I need to save as much time as I can because I got help coming in. Austin is gonna help me on Saturday Put this blind up and I, I want to be sensitive to the time that he's giving me but I also don't want to assemble all these little metal pieces bolts washers out in the middle of a hay field where I got it I know I just know that I would lose them so I'm got hardware here I got tools here we're gonna put this blind stand together bolted to the floor and then on Saturday when Austin gets here we're gonna fold it over into my trailer haul it to the farm tip it up, put it in the spot, anchor the stand down, and then we'll build the blind in the location. So this is a seven by seven, the big size blind. So it's gonna be a lot of random assembly footage over the next couple days. So I hope it helps the people that are trying to evaluate uh, whether to buy this blind or how to put it together. I hope it'll help you. So stay tuned, we appreciate the support. Make sure you like and subscribe. unpacked but I give you a piece of advice if you're gonna be doing this when you get your blind either tarp it or store it inside because I had a lot of water sitting inside these panels and the carpet insulation and soundproofing is pretty damp so I'm gonna leave them out in the Sun and hopefully it'll dry out in the next two days but definitely don't want to close up a blind with wet carpet inside We'll end up with a mold problem. Okay, the blind's unpacked. Let's open up the let's open up the stand package and see what we got for instructions. We can go ahead and build the ladder and try to get the base installed to the floor. Okay, well, first impressions, I got everything unpacked. Um, it's hot out, even though it's the evening after work and uh, I'm still sweating pretty bad, but first impressions of everything, two pieces of advice. Number one, when you buy your blind before you put it up and assemble it, try to store it inside. If you can't store it inside, put a tarp over it. I had quite a bit of uh, water laying in the panels and uh, some of that inside carpet 
they, they use this soundproof and insulation. It's damp. So the last thing you want to do is unpack this thing for the first time and it'd be wet inside and then close it up. You'd have to leave it open for a period of time or else you'd have mold mildew uh, inside of your blind. And you don't want that, especially people like me with allergies. But um, the other thing is I noticed that the hardware is very well labeled, even though they use Ziploc bags to, to put the bolts and hardware in. It's very well labeled, really good instructions with pictures in it. So I'm sure we won't have any problem unless I don't read the instructions right. They even gave you a bag of extra hardware in case you lost something or didn't have it. So uh, really impressed so far with the packaging. Everything was nice and tidy, no shipping damage. So let's start to try to figure out how to get this base together. Okay, so I found my first problem with my assembly. So those tabs right here are made for the cable to hook over. So when I put it in, I did not slide the leg mount. I did not slide this piece back far enough to allow this to go in and hook on that. So I got two choices. I can either trim out that two by four up there or unscrew it and push it back. Not sure what I should do. All right, I ended up just unscrewing it, moving it back. I didn't have any issues. And that goes to there.
we're down to some of the final pieces for the spot I'm gonna call Killing Corner. And uh, I'm sitting here running the bush hog, trying to get a couple things done, but we got the blind in. And I'm gonna show you that, show you shooting lanes, show you access. But um, I'm just really, really excited about this. The big thing I wanna preface with all of this is I had a couple questions and they were great questions. And it says, Terry, how come you're walking around your property doing this much work right before hunting season starts in Kentucky? We're about two and a half weeks away. And you're absolutely right. I wish I could have gotten all this done in February, uh, March, April, but my schedule just didn't allow it. And to be quite honest with you, I don't have a shooter buck. I have mature bucks, but none that are gonna really make or break me on this farm. So I have the opportunity to get it done now. I have time in between work and family obligations. So we're flying in and getting it done. So Patrick Simpson, Austin Razor came and helped me this morning before the rain. We had a rain shower come through around lunch. It's the late afternoon and I'm back over here bush hogging and getting a couple things done. But I'm gonna show you around a little bit and explain what's going on and show you what the final pieces are going to be for Killing Corner. So this is a small little inside corner that I used to have in food plot and didn't plant it this year. And then we have a two acre bean field that runs right back up through here that I have wrapped in corn. Shown this on the video several times for those people, but just off of these field edges where these trees are is steep bedding that has been TSI'd. So I worked on that last year, got all my bedding done and then on the other side of that corn is bedding. So what happens is these deer come and they filter from all three sides. We're on the back of the property. So from this direction, from this direction, and from this direction on the back of the property and access is from there. So originally I set this place up for hunting and said, I wanna hunt this. This is a hub where all the deer are feeding into this plot. I have this little old fence row that comes out that they would follow along. So I got the bright idea of putting a box blind right here on the corner. And quite honestly, the access was horrible. Uh, saw a lot of deer, shot a couple deer, but um, you know, the weeds have grown up, but the access is horrible getting in from the back. So. What I decided to do is now that I'm gonna move more food towards the access, this is all gonna be, as of right now, in switchgrass next year. So everything you see flat right here is going to be more diverse bedding on the property, okay? But for this year, it's all in beans, and I'm hoping the deer are gonna filter out just like they always do. But instead of them coming right beside the blind, I'm gonna put some round bales right here to block this off until that strip of miscanthus takes off so there'll be a wall and what i did here today is just one bush hog path i hate mowing down beans people it, it pains me sickens me to my stomach but what i'm going to do is when i plant my fall plots i'm going to till this little strip up right here and put it in a fall plot so like a dixie dozen a deadly dozen and all we're trying to do is encourage a little bit of deer movement to come this direction. They won't be able to cut through there because of the round bells. We're gonna come through here. They'll be coming off, nipping off. You can see the browse pressure already. Nipping off the beans as they walk through. Because remember here in Kentucky in early season, it's all about alfalfa. All about alfalfa. The uh, redneck hay bale blind that you guys have seen in the videos a couple times, it's on its back. I went to move it this morning and got lit up by a wasp. Luckily it was just on my legs and so no severe allergic reaction, but I got some wasp spray in the truck. We're gonna take that over to Patrick's for an early season hunt over there, okay? So you can see there's the 360, we'll look at it in a minute. Right there's where we came from. We want all those deer, no matter where they come out on this two acre field, we want them to encourage them to pop out right here. We've got bedding to the left right there. All these deer are gonna pop out and 
hit the alfalfa, which is just to the left of my tractor. And then guess what? Right in killing corner. So this will be even better when this miscantha strip takes off because this miscantha strip connects all the way over to that blind. So they'll be less likely to cross that. So for right now, I probably will have some deer cut through the corn. I probably will have some deer stage up. But when this all back here is in switchgrass, I'm gonna pull deer right out into rotated crop with corn, alfalfa, and soybeans all within a chip shot bow range of the 360 blind. So remember there's right to the right of my tractor, miscanthus going all the way out. More round bales are gonna be delivered. We're gonna put in front of the stand and stack them. That's the only thing I could think of to give me a buffer to uh, deer not being able to see me get out. I'll uh, walk out, I'll take one of those rows of corn right back there take that out and walk the corn all the way out to the truck and then this is our hallway so deer are either going to come from the new path by the hay bale blind they're going to come over there from that inside corner hopefully if they come from that direction they're going to want to come over to the feeder which is going to be down here we got the temporary old feeder here the redneck's going to go about another 20 yards past it and I've seen a picture on this feeder since I've done this with 16 deer in that hallway. So you can see the trail cameras right over there in the miscanthus and corn edge. 16 deer in frame right here. So, and then for some reason, just that little bit of topography, the deer love popping up out of the bedding where the camera is facing and heading. So we want the deer to come right out and come right up here that's the goal to get up to killing corner now i did spray and mow this little knoll here that's going to be tilled up and planted in dixie dozen the sorghum did okay i left three strips in there and then mowed the rest of it after i sprayed it we'll put that in some fall plot so we want all the deer in here to feed up through here this will all be a miscanthus wrap so they won't be able to cut that corner and from this direction they'll come so anything coming think about it this way anything coming from this side of the farm from bedding from that side of the farm with bedding are going to be coming towards the alfalfa and towards the food over here anything from this direction hopefully we'll want a little um, taste of some complete feed and come through if not this alfalfa corner right here is about 63 yards across so not too bad i can cover half of it with a bow out of the blind so i'm really stoked about the 360. Uh, so i'm probably going to cut this row out right here so then I'll be able to, corn's on 30 inch rows, so if I take one row out, should be okay. It was a little muddy this morning, so the only bad part is we got a little bit of mud on the carpet. But, dirty steamy in here. So we can see that mowed path from the corner. Anything coming up out of that, I'll be able to see them coming. Hopefully funnel them right to there between the edge of the corn and the rolled over hay bale blind. I'm gonna haul that out of here today. I got some wasp spray to get the wasp out. And then anything walking through the hallway from the right to left is in dead man zone. Anything that comes out over there, I'll be able to shoot to the alfalfa. I'll trim some of the corn tassels off. But yeah, really, really happy with how this turned out. If we have a really, really hard winter, they'll stop hitting that uh, alfalfa earlier. But last year, they were still really hammering the alfalfa even into November. Really looking forward to all this being bedding. This two acres, 
Uh, it'll probably be a little bit more than that because that inside corner and the sorghum patch will all be in switchgrass. And the wind will blow directly from here to that blind. I access on the downwind side. I think it's going to be dynamite. But for right now, we're using it as food. If you're wondering about this blind, this blind is coming out. I don't know. I'm not going to be able to do it before this season, but this blind is made out of insulated garage door panels. It's about seven years old, I believe. And uh, the roof leaks, the windows are bad, floors rotted out. So I'm going to give it to one of my friends who has kids, and but we got to get it out of there and tip it up on its side and put a new floor in it. And, try to seal that roof up so the idea of making something out of insulated garage door panels sounds good but it just has not lasted that crack in the ceiling and letting the water in is what ruined it so yeah we're gonna block off this corner right here to the base with round bales hopefully any deer is gonna come hopefully encourage them to walk right out through here with some fall plot I don't, I'm not going to use clover. I don't know. I might. I'll have to see what kind of seed I have, what my inventory is. So, all right. We'll also go up and look at the runway. If you remember what the runway is, that's where the sweet corn patch was. And we'll drive up there and let you see that. And then I'm going to load this round bell blind up and get out of here and go cook some meat on the grill tonight. Well, this is up on another area of the farm that I've showed you before called the runway and this was the sweet corn patch got it all picked it had a bunch of weeds in it and grasses so this uh, this little field right here is about 170 175 yards long and this will be in a fall plot we're gonna call it the runway and the big reason to do this is that calf barn, what used to be the calf barn, straight ahead beside the uh, small little silos. We'll be able to sit right in there during gun season and take some kids hunting or if we get some uh, deer that we want to take off the property that are up here eating on this fall plot, we'll be able to sit right inside that little, little building right there. Yeah, this was just all in my sweet corn. I had a bumper sweet corn crop. So, got it all mowed down. We'll get it, the ground worked up and then, uh, plant probably here in about two weeks. Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I came home tonight and got a shower, ate dinner with the family and gonna make an early night of it. So, I'm, I'm tired. We're gonna sit down for a little bit this evening and rest up a little bit and get ready for church in the morning god bless everyone thank you for your support uh, please keep the families that we're working with in luster's feet in your prayers um, we've had a rough week and i um, fortunate to be able to connect with so many people uh, thanks for those who have supported the foundation uh, it means more than you know please like and subscribe thanks everybody have a good sunday